Hey everybody, it's Matt Powers. I'm a teacher, author, gardener, seed saver, and family guy, and I teach people all over the world how to live more regeneratively. And today I'm talking about annual versus perennial. What you're gonna plant, what you're gonna support in your system. Well, the reality is there are, there are major reasons to plant perennials over annuals. And I'm gonna boil it down to the top five reasons why we should be planting perennials. So the number one reason we should be planting perennials is the carbon sequestration. Because it builds soil, because you're not cutting the soil, you're not oxidizing it. You're ha constantly having the leaf litter come down. You're constantly making mulch. This is the system that builds soils and builds it fast. Annual systems are never going to build systems, soils like perennial systems. So we've got to do it. We've got to embrace it because we need to sequester that carbon. All right, number two reason, long-term and stable. This is, this is a process of creating a system that can last hundreds of years. And it may take some time, right? It may take five years, it may take 20 years for you to get full maturity and full yields out of your system, but it's long-term. It can last decades, if not centuries, and it's stable. I mean, every other year, you're gonna get like a bigger crop, you know, with some systems. Some system, it's a stable every year. You get the same sort of range of yield. Sometimes you have a drought year, you get less. Sometimes you get a wet year, you get more. But you've got this stable, this stable return from your system. So it's a good investment. All right, number three, low maintenance and high yield. I once saw this amazing documentary. I think it was Broken Limbs. This one man had an apple orchard where it was designed so every row was a different week to harvest. And he would go and he would harvest and it was enough for him to fill up his wagon, to do it all in one day himself, and then sell it to make enough money to pay for everything, all his needs. And it was this perfect system where he didn't have to work too hard, didn't need employees. It was low maintenance. And then he had these high yields. In, we, we all know apples, you know, and a lot of fruit trees, a lot of nut trees, they give you so much abundance. They give you these high yields. If you go through Washington, people lament this all the time. There's apples on the ground everywhere. These are edible apples. These are wonderful apples, but no one harvests them. They're too busy in their minds in their daily life to, to pause, to take that Saturday, take that, that evening after you get back from work or that morning before you go to work and go and gather those, that, that amazing yield. So there's amazing high yields just happening all the time in nature, right? We talk about that acorn harvest in my podcast recently. This was a bumper crop year for acorns and a lot of people harvested them and realized that they could make really good food very quickly with acorns. So keep your eyes out for high yields. And then number four, supports biodiversity. Have you guys seen all the figures and the facts and the crazy stuff going on right now with biodiversity? Wildlife is in decline. We need to support the wildlife, the biodiversity. We need to ramp it up, support it. And these systems naturally do that. When you've got a regenerative organic system and you've got an orchard set up and you've got all the different polycultural levels so you have you have the lower levels, you have the shrubs, you've got the creepers, you've got the ground cover. You're going to have all these different levels and you're gonna see amazing things, just like Stefan Sokoviak of, you know, the permaculture orchard says, Le Ferme a Miracles, you know, the, the miracle farm. He sees birds come in when the pests come in and then remove it a few days later. And he sees this constant flow and flux of predator and prey and he's got a really resilient system. So he sees them come in, they get a little bit here, a little bit there, but then they're moved and taken away. And it's this resilient system that supports biodiversity, that supports him and supports all his customers. And it can support you. All right, so the number five reason why perennials are better than annuals is it's easier to start. It really is. I mean, with annual system, you gotta do all this work. You do, with a perennial system, you can literally take a bare root tree 
and put it in the ground and mend that little pocket area instead of terraforming the whole hill. And then you can broad fork a long contour making a rip just like you would with a key line system and then plant the next tree. I mean, it can be minimal. You can have the compost tea going and then just do right there. Just do right there and around the tree. It doesn't need to be this whole thing where you have fields and fields. You could do pockets if you've got a really wild site and you're like, well, I can't really remove all these trees. It's do a pocket thing and then it fits right in and it can grow in through that space. You can get a high yield and then start grafting on different varieties so that you get that spread out throughout the year. It's so easy. It's amazing. And we all can do it. And even in small spaces, you know? All right. So those are the top five reasons why perennials over annuals should be your focus. So the only reason why annuals are so, so you know, focused upon is because they scale up so fast because they give you that short, you know, you get that short term gain. You plant them and then eat them that season or you can eat them while they're growing, while they're still like sprouts. There's, there's that kind of return. When you're growing trees, there's a wait time, you know, and you may end up getting way higher yields, but it's that wait time that, you know, when you're constantly on the move as a culture, when you're constantly moving to a new location to set up annual agriculture, strips the land and move on, you never really have that kind of stability. And that's the thing is it's like, we've been on this annual train so long that we've, you know, gone around and eaten up the landscape. You know, the age of valuing that short-term game over long-term stability is rapidly ending. Um, the, the, I mean, even the World Bank right now is, they just announced they're divesting from all gas and oil extraction. This is a sea change moment. Like regenerative organic standards are about to hit in 2018. We're about to see an entirely new world emerge. I'm ho I hope you're ready. It's 2000, uh, 2018 is about to be, you know, like a dream come true for many of us. We're about to see a change that, you know, we've only thought was like far off. It's about to come and hit us right now. It's about to happen right now. We're about to see a sea change. And if you're not involved, you're going to be left behind because and you're going to just hop in line and target and buy it with everyone else. But you can be part of this regenerative change right now. And so what can you do? you know, to, to take part in this at home in your own daily life. Well, right now you can just go plant a tree. If you're in an area that, uh, that allows that, if it's not covered with snow like my area or, or frost, you can plant a tree or you can plan to plant trees this spring or you could plan to plant 20 or you could plan to plant, you know, an entire food forest with the balanced layers and all those things so that you could have that stable exponential growth sports biodiversity and can last hundreds of years. Yeah, and that's possible. We all can have that. It's actually not that hard. Uh, I mean, the information that a permaculture design course has is really like eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, and it's difficulty. It is not, not hard. You know, we all can set these things up and make them amazing. Um, so plant a tree, plant 20 trees, and you know, make that food forest happen. And then we need to start living it. It needs to just, you know, we need to start living and eating seasonally. So when things in our local area are ripe, we start eating them instead of importing things out of season from other areas. And then last but not least, we need to embrace it all the way. We need to eat this food. We need to be the perennial dieteers. We <laughs> We need to buy from local native food sources, right? We need to eat as seasonality as possible. But at the same time, it's got to be perennial. It has to feed into that. We need to support the people who are supporting us, supporting soil, supporting the stable long-term systems. Because now you know how much of an investment it is, why it's so important. Now you know how much time they put in to having that orchard, to having that polycultural food forest system that's giving so much food that they can now share with the community. Not only that, those seeds are gonna be amazing. You're gonna to wanna to support them and get seeds you know, for your own system, but you're gonna to wanna to eat that food. 
It's going to be the most nutrient dense food. It's going to be food that, you know, puts you into a system of, of long term survivability for humanity, for all biodiversity, for, you know, sequestering carbon, for cycling all the minerals, for, you know, moderating the climate, because that's what forests do. They moderate the climate when we have these endless fields of, you know, dirt in Iowa and Nebraska for big parts of the long periods of time in it, it, it is not doing what a forest would do or even, you know, an agroforest where you had lanes of annuals between perennials would do in those seasons. When those storms pass through, when all the rain comes down and pours and hits that bare soil, like, it's totally different when there's a tree there. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I, we could go into it forever, what, what, what all the amazing effects are in trees and not get to, you know, the full list because trees, you know, there's so much going on, so much interaction. I'll just give you one example here. Every single root hair can be putting out in a different exudate or a different set of exudates and it will attract specific fungi and bacteria. So in other words, not just each root, but each root hair, each area of interaction can be completely different. And then it's timing wise is not uniform. Sometimes some things stay for, you know, weeks, some things stay for years, some things are, you know, they, 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 they move around and it's, it's going off like fireworks like this underneath and it's constantly changing. And so we have no idea how to perfectly track in situ the interactions of fungi and bacteria with roots of trees. We can surmise and we can, we can test and prove things, but it's so complicated. It's happening, overlapping and stacking all at once that we don't know. And that's just one thing. <laughs> that's just one thing. Um, it's amazing. It's really humbling. And you know, I always say it all the time. I am a student. I'm a teacher, but the best teachers are the best students. And so I seek to try to be the best student so that I can serve my students at that highest level. And I am excited because we're starting a new live course, Permaculture Gardening. Right now, in January 8th, we're all beginning. I'm having all the alumni from my pastures, my experienced gardeners, people who've been doing permaculture for years now, having huge successes in all these different bioregions. They're, they're gonna join us. They're gonna be you know, co-teaching, participating, and it's going to be this huge like summit of gardening knowledge and regenerative thought. And so you should join us. It's gonna be amazing. We're gonna, it's half price off. It's lifetime access to the community. And, and the course materials. There's a permaculture gardening certification pathway now. Uh, it, it's, it, there's all these bonuses. You should check it out. The, I'll, I'll post the link below in the comments. Um, thank you guys for listening. And I hope that this year you grow perennials over your annuals. That you focus on scaling up long term. Not just in the short term. Alright guys. Have a wonderful week and I'm gonna keep coming out with these lives. I'm, we're gonna just keep pumping them out. Every day I'm gonna have another talk for you. We're gonna be talking about what you're gonna be doing this year in your garden, what you can overcome, what, you know, addressing some of the biggest fears that people have about gardening, biggest concerns people are having about gardening. I mean, why are we seeing, you know, squash bugs and stink bugs and all these different bugs attacking uniformly, things like squash, all over the nation? You know, I mean, like all over America. And we're, we're, we're seeing it coast to coast. When I was, you know, answering, yeah, we'll talk about it all. There's so many things to talk about. So I will see you tomorrow. I hope that you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively.